um, boy, they they find well, they don't they make up stuff. They don't find anything. They everything they say is so far fetched and just so mean. Everybody's got skeletons in their closet. Everybody. Some just don't want to admit to it. That's the thing. Note. Because some will start screeching about libel and other things they know nothing about. Truth is a defense. If you don't believe that, do some research into defamation laws and also see Johnny Depp's recent libel suit against a newspaper. They called him a wife beater. He got upset and sued for defamation. And he lost because the paper showed it was true. The Sun, a UK newspaper, featured this headline. Calling Depp a wife beater left no interpretation as to whether that was alleged or an opinion, two terms that are often used when discussing defamation. So Depp sued. The Sun defended itself by showing 14 instances of alleged domestic violence by Depp against Amber Heard. I have reached these conclusions having examined in detail the 14 incidents on which the defendants rely, as well as the overarching considerations which the claimant submitted I should take into account, Judge Andrew Nichol wrote in his 129-page verdict. I'll be doing a short presentation in an upcoming video about fair use, defamation, and some other issues, because I simply cannot stand the dullard's folly that a few of you pass off as knowledge and fact. That was a long-winded preamble. Sorry about that. Let's move on to the rape conviction. I would have let this one rest. But you harpies just couldn't shut your virtual pie holes. You had to keep saying it was a lie, didn't you? Someone posted a link to an article about the conviction, and another suggested it must be someone else with that name. So, let's straighten this out. It's fairly unambiguous. CB, who lived in Montgomery, Alabama, at that time, was arrested, prosecuted, and found guilty of rape in 1976, when he was age 21. He was sentenced to 20 years. The victim was 18 and testified that he abducted her at gunpoint from a shopping center and forced her to drive to a field where he raped her. He was later arrested and charged with burglary and attempted rape in connection with another incident. Because this was in the 70s, some of the details are not clear. The one thing that is clear is that CB was charged with rape and was convicted and sentenced to 20 years. It is not publicly known when he was released from prison but at some point, he and Sharon married. This stuff is public record and quickly found if you know how to use a search engine. CB did marry a different woman before he was with Sharon. The wedding announcement online indicated they were married in a church, so he was obviously out of prison by that time. This was 1981. I don't know if he was released on parole or his conviction was overturned. Perhaps he got early release for good behavior. If you know the circumstances about his prison release, reach out. I would be happy to share the good news. Until then, we'll have to assume that he served only a few of his 20-year sentence, since he married the first woman five years after his conviction. You can learn things about a person, or the family, by looking at things in the newspaper. Wedding announcements, obituaries, divorces. Here are two additional bits of information that might shed some light. A funeral notice for CB's mother in 2011. It lists family members, including two grandchildren, Sharon's daughter, and one of her sons. The other grandson is not mentioned at all. In various obits, her daughter is listed with CB's last name, as CB's daughter, and Sharon's two sons are listed with another last name, and called stepsons. I cannot imagine why one step-grandson would be mentioned and his brother omitted. You can speculate all kinds of things, and none of them good. We also don't know who wrote the obituary, and that person could have just been a bitch. The other little bit of info is in a memoriam notice published in the paper about CB, three years after his death. You can see here that they signed it mom and dad, his and Sharon's daughter, his sister, and his stepson. Again, the second stepson was left out. They also don't mention Sharon, his widow. She has talked a number of times on her former channel about this man, how much she loved him, 
how traumatic his death was as he died in her arms and how she missed him. She even did a sad anniversary tribute as she and her sister traveled to his grave. But then I caught a little blip. This was published in March 2006, three years after his death. In another notice from the same paper, we see that Sharon married another man, NSW, the month before. In February 2006. I guess that could be a little touchy, although for crying out loud, three years is long enough to grieve. But this exclusion of the other stepson. It's upsetting to me. I think it's a shitty thing to do, even if I don't know the circumstances. That's my opinion. The thing about doing a public YouTube channel and using your full name is that people who know you might have an axe to grind. Not me, I do not know Sharon personally. But people from her past have shared information and stories. These could be relatives she pissed off at some point. And a relative could be a sibling or in-law, even a child. But a relative could also be a third cousin. It wouldn't be unheard of that a woman scorned would share information she knew. Perhaps Sharon hooked up with someone's husband and that wife was angry. Could have been a high school romance and someone has carried that anger all these years. Perhaps an old lover she hurt. You just never know. All I'm saying is there are people who know Sharon very personally and might share a few details. Could they make things up? Absolutely. That's why I like to name my source of information. Not their real names unless they want to share, but newspaper clippings, public records, a cousin's narrative. You can read more tales from around town by going to the Gossip Bakery. Maybe I'll post more here, or maybe not. We have gallons of tea at the bakery.